so this morning my team is in the valley of dry bone this is my team this morning in the valley of dry bone and it reads ezekiel chapter 37 1 to 14. ezekiel chapter 37 1 to 14 and it's read the hand of the lord was upon me and carry me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of God. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will sin you upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put bread in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds of breath, and breathe upon these slain, they may live. So, this is a prophetic portion of scripture that I'll just read there. It is showing you when you are in the valley of dry bone, God word will always what? Find a place. Once it goes forth, it must accomplish the task. No matter how long ago it is going to do what it said. So this prophetic was intended for the children of Israel at that time. So we could look at this and compare it to our life today. But then they, they were what? Demoralized. They, they were in turmoil. They, they were attacked by different army. They were also enslaved and in Babylon. Yes, we can interject ourselves so that it, we demoralize, we are in turmoil. So today many of us suffering various attacks. It might be spiritual attack, physical attack, mental attack. Every disaster is just coming and coming and it seems as though it has no end. So it, it was the same thing back then. But God used this particular man, this prophet Ezekiel. So we understand he was also caught up in the turmoil. So there was no special privilege for, for him. Because he said, because Ezekiel said in Ezekiel 1.1, 1, 1, hear what he said. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives, by the river of Sheba, that the heaven were open, and I saw a vision of God. So we also see Ezekiel was also in a turmoil. So Ezekiel was also among the captives. So he didn't have no special privilege. So when you are in captivity, you no longer have what freedom to do as you want. So that this is a reason you could be demoralized and you could be in stress because you have no freedom, you have nothing of your own. 
So the scripture one is teaching you and giving you a reason why you should be seeking and praying to God and listening out for his voice. Because in the valley is where you're going to receive a word and you will receive your instructions. So we, we get in that in our mindset. In the valley is where you're going to receive a word and where you're going to receive your instruction. Nevertheless, you know there, that there is turmoil, but if you get caught up in all these activities, you cannot hear the voice. So you cannot be distracted when you're in the valley. Because if you concentrate on the turmoil and whatever is going on around you, you would not hear the voice. So this whole thing is to hear the voice and get an instruction in the valley of your dry bone. So we see Ezekiel was what? Caught up in it. He was in exile, but he never gave up hope. He was in exile, but the word is saying he never gave up hope. He is telling us today, whatever your turmoil is in the valley of dry bones, don't give up hope. So this is the message this morning. Whatever turmoil you are in, in the valley of dry bone, do not give up hope this morning. So somebody need to hear that word today to encourage themselves. So I want somebody to encourage themselves this morning in the valley. Don't give up hope. There is hope. Because dry bone means no hope. But once you have the king of kings, yes, there is hope in the valley. So Ezekiel didn't lose focus and he didn't give up his relationship with God. So when we take a look today at people who profess to be Christian, when they are going through a little turmoil, they lose focus and they stop fellowshipping with God. So what they are doing now, they lose hope, so now they are looking back into the world. And they ex and they excuse it. What is the excuse? Five years now I prayed and I prayed for God to hear this need. And like more I pray, the pain is going. And I ain't getting healed. So this is the excuse when they're in the valley. You see, you see me? I hear about a old man on top of the hill a repair on the mountain. People testify and say he's a science man. And he's working good. He'll get results. So this is going to be your mindset now in the valley. So right away we understand the scripture already. Told some will depart from the faith and take heed to seducing spirit. So remember, don't give up in the valley of dry bone. So this is the message that Ezekiel is trying to show you. Don't give up. Trust God. So, Jesus, so just remember his word always remind us when we are going through. In Psalm 30 verse 5. Psalm 30 verse 5. For his anger endured but a moment in the favor in life. Weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning. So we see favor is for life. But once you give up hope, you could never receive that joy that he speak about. This joy comes from God only. So we get an understanding. This joy comes from God only. So you cannot purchase it in no store. You cannot receive it on social media. No prophet can prophesy it and you receive it. No. It comes from having faith and holding on and trusting in him. So this is where this joy comes from. Society will tell you what? You have to be happy every day. This is what society will teach you. But guess what? Happiness is just a state. So it might be for a short time and then you will go looking in the wrong places for it. Some take to the bottle because alco and become alcoholic. So this is what the state that some turn to get happiness. Some try the drugs for happiness and what? Become a drug addict. Some try different sex partners and become promiscuous, searching for the ha this happiness. So when you don't maintain a relationship with God, this is the end product. Misery and more misery. 
So you see, Ezekiel meant in a relationship with God. So he was favored, he was chosen, and he was called out and given assignment. Even though he was in captivity, he never lose sight who is the creator and what. We see in verse 2 to 3 in where he received his assignment. So right away, he was called out to be a prophet. So we see a, a prophet is someone that was called to God as a mouthpiece to carry a warning or to give a message. So this is what the prophet was. But today, New Age or Millennium time, you could go in any store and buy a, a prophetic anointing and walk back and prophesy. Oh my. <laughs> Fables and what? You'll be prophesying lies. Teach it, teach it. Because they don't have a relationship with God. So God never send them with no assignment. I become so I become so real now nowadays. You have a prophet coming to town. Everybody want to be in the front. So this is how it reach now. As they hear a prophet coming to town, everybody want a front seat. Because the shock is nothing about repentance. All they will hear is God is getting ready to bless you with a big house in West Morin. Thank, thank, thank you, God. Mm. God is getting ready to upgrade you with a BMW. You ball out, hallelujah. I see money coming in the bank for you. I receive it, Lord. So this is all what you're receiving now when you hear a prophet come into town. Fables and lies. They are deceivers. So no longer Christians want to hear have a relationship with God because God is taking too long. So this is their mindset. He's taking too long. So what will happen? You will remain in the valley of dry bones because you want to try your own thing. And your own thing keep you what? In bondage. So when you are distressed, how could you go around singing? So when so this is what you tell me. When you're in distress, how you could go around singing? You are my strength, hmm. but God don't know you, preach it, and you preach don't it. know Him. Hmm. Or you go around telling people that you are in 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 power and you are favored by God, but you have no relationship with Him. That is contrary. We see Isaiah forty one ten. We say Isaiah forty one ten. He say, "Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not." Dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Mm. So, when you have a relationship with God, it doesn't matter what valley you are in. His word doesn't lie because it says, I will strengthen you and I will uphold you Amen. with my right hand. That's so, you right. hear the, the promise? So, we see Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And what does it say? Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and they say what? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his what? purpose. So out of every situation, no matter how bad it may seem in the eyes, don't lose hope and focus because in that valley of dry bone, there is a testimony coming from you. How great God is, what he has done for me. So this is the purpose of the valley of dry wood is for testimony to come out how great God is and what he has done for me. So we read Ezekiel chapter 37 and in verse 1, what it said? Said, what he said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carry me out in the spirit of the Lord. So we understand for someone to operate in the divine, the hands of the Lord what? must be upon them so yes the world is in the valley the whole world is in the valley of dry bone meaning dry bone as i said means hopelessness it exile turmoil everything that will deprive you of hope today so when you look at the world everything everything you're seeing yes it will deprive them it could be what your family problem in your house a turmoil so what can happen? It will deprive you. It could be problem in the school. Children going to school is problem. It could be a health situation. You're sick bad. The doctor say, well, I give up. You're praying and nothing happening. 
It could be what? Violent in your community that you live with. That's safe. That's human bandit, criminal. It could be a job where your co worker living by the Obia man to get your job. So if these things are your valley of dry bone and deprive you of hope, I want you to encourage yourself, don't give up on God. Because God will never give up on you. Amen. You will never come out of that valley because the hands of God is no longer over you. God can give life to those dry bones, hope and hope, hopeless. So the, so the question is, can these dry bones live to whatever the valley that you are in? You must have what? In your mindset, you have to remember Ezekiel mindset when right. God asked him the question, can he dry bone live? Uh, you see, Ezekiel had a what? A relationship with God. So he understood who God is. And he understood that he was created in the image and likeness of God. That means that his power and authority invested in him. So once you speak it in the atmosphere, everything must hear the word of God and obey. So you have this understanding. So Ezekiel looked at the dry bones. He saw once they were what? Life form existing. Now he see darkness over the dry bone. So he demonstrates his power by prophesying light, comfort, dry bones, and obey the word of God and, and shaking begin and life come forth. Why? Because he had what? A personal relationship with God. So he could have stand on his authority from God. So this is when you have a, a relationship with God, you have a certain amount of authority and power. So you could be able to, to use it because it is invested in you. So you have to have a relationship. So whatever valley that you are in this morning, remember the story with Ezekiel. Ezekiel had a relationship and he had power invested in him and authority. Amen? So my Christian brothers and sisters, whatever as I say, dry bone that you are in this today. Don't look at the bones. Look at what it once was and prophesy over it. Keep it in your mindset that greater is he who that is in, is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Everything that you hear, the word of God said it must obey. So everything must obey what? The word of God. That's right. That scripture. That's right. So confidence and faith now. So you can stand on whatever, you understand, mountain or whatever valley, and you stand upon the wood. So if you're dry bone, they pressure on you on the job because they want your position. Prophesy over it. Dry bone to come forth. So you keep on prophesying, prophesying, prophesying over your problem or your situation. If it is sickness and the doctor say that they give you up, once upon a time I had great health. I was created perfectly with all my organs and limbs working. Prophesy over your bones. Prophesy over your dry bones. So this is the concept. You have to prophesy over your problem when you are in a valley of dry bones. If your dry bones is your prayer life going down a hill, you're struggling to pray and forgetting words, the enemy have you bound up in the valley. Prophesy over your dry bones. Lord, once upon a time, I, I was a prayer warrior, but now I am, I, I am for, from you, Lord. So, but I prophesy now, when I pray, the atmosphere must change. I am coming out from this prison, Lord. When I pray in the spirit realm, earthquake must shake the kingdom of darkness. Okay, Francis, you have five minutes to wrap up. This is the truth. So this is supposed to be your mindset. You see, you must understand once you want God to walk in your valley, you must be in that place, seeking him, faith. So only then he will give you hope in speaking to you. But if you want to behave like a headless chicken running all over the place, crying and bawling, you're telling God now, God, this problem is too big for you. I don't think you can handle it. What will happen? Here, your problem will become like a mountain, and your mindset, God, will become like what a grasshopper to you. So, your valley will consume you with dry bones, and what happens? You will perish. 
So this is going to be a mindset. So yes, society today is losing hope. Some say they run to the church, but the church tell them according to the seed, that the seed then we could attend to your need. So this is what happening in society. They say they run to the politician and the politician say, vote for me and you'll get honey in your pipe. And when they vote, instead, they get vinegar. Some run to the doctor for hope. The doctor said, trust the vaccine. It will make you younger than Neyman. So this is what society is telling you. So they say when they look at all they could see and hear is war, rumors of war, earthquake, storm, hurricane. So when some feel they have hope with their money in the bank, they will tell you, you have to what, take the mark of the beast to do any transaction. So this is society, when you have hope in society. So yes, this is the world today, and we are living in. It's called the value of dry bones. The confidence in having a relationship with God, Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. So you see, he said, Lord, you know. This is the confidence that he had. So right now, we get the solution. Having a relationship with God, because God sees and knows everything. So there we receive the answer. Yes, we can have hope. Some prideful Christian always trying to help God. I will do it myself. I will make this and I will make that. And when they finish, all they make is what? A mess. You see, we always need God to order our footsteps. So the only way that we could overcome our dry bone is when God gave us that authority to speak and prophesy in our situation. So we have that understanding. So we see Ezekiel was given the authority to speak over the dry bone. He didn't take up upon himself and say, dry bone, this is Ezekiel, come to life. He said, dry bone, hear the word of God. So you see the authority. So whenever you are in the valley of dry bone, you have to do is prayer morning, noon, and night. Seek God's faith, travail, worship. In due season, he will deliver you and he will come down to last hope. We see many people don't want to start, but they want to finish. You see, there is an order in which God do things. We see the order in which God command Ezekiel. In verse 7, he said, So I prophesy as I was commanded, and as I prophesy, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bone came together, bone to bone. So we get in some information. When you're in the valley of the dry bone, you have to be obedient as Ezekiel and follow instruction to prophesy over your dry bone or whatever situation you are in. Meaning, pray morning, noon, and night. Pray, pray until you have you are shaking of that dry bone in the valley. Don't get anxious. Let anxiety take you over. Remember, there is an order and a procedure in your deliverance and your breakthrough coming out of the valley of dry bone. Now you see in verse 8, it says, it stated, and when I behold to the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above. But there was that no breath in them, so they were no dry bone with what? With flesh. The meaning of sinew is what? Fiber connective tissue that connect muscles to the bone. So that is what he was saying. So this is a work of progress order in procedure. So whatever situation or whatever problem or disaster that you are in, you, have, you still don't have total deliverance. So you have to continue praying, trusting, praying, trusting, praying, trusting. We see verse 9 said, Then he, he unto me prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds of breath and breathe upon the slain that they may live. So this is your final victory. You come out of your situation. You is an overcomer. What happened? You have been a child of God. You have been obedient. You follow instruction. He said prophesy to the four winds. Four winds mean completion of the valley. So God, isn't God great? So isn't God wonderful? So you hear the, the, how we come out? So this is how you're going to get your deliverance.
she prophesied to the four winds, meaning four corners, meaning completion. So when you're getting your deliverance, you have to keep on pressing and pressing to continue your deliverance. Not when you see a little shaking, you give up and you say things, okay, remember the enemy always comes to kill, to steal and destroy. Amen? So I hope this message could bless somebody and somebody could understand that the valley, no matter what valley you're in, there are hope. Yes, no matter what dry bones, yes, there are hope this morning. Just trust in the Lord, have a personal relationship. Keep praying, keep trusting as Ezekiel. Keep praying and keep trusting for God to direct him, to prophesy over a situation. In Jesus' name, Amen.